All right, so we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, September 15th, 2021 to order. Uh, in attendance is David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, John Waskevitz, Jane Nevinsmith, and Amy Parsons. And the meeting is being recorded as well as streamed on Hadley Media. Um, and all votes will be taken via roll call. Uh, consent agenda. We have warrants AP2210S, AP2210, AP2209V, PR2205, AP2209, AP2209S, AP2208, A, this is APP208S, I'm not sure if that's right, but uh, minutes from August 4th, 2021, and that's it. So moved. Second. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. And uh, any discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chung Lo. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Jennifer, was the resident that was trying to get on, were they trying to do public comments or? They wanted to do public comments. He's tried a couple of times. Um, but what we're going to do is at the next meeting, I've invited him to join me here at town hall and yeah. he can do his public comment from there. And he said that that was fine for him. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and move to 3.1 public comments. Uh, we'll limit it to 15 minutes. Please limit it to three minutes each. So everyone has a turn. Anybody here for public comments? David? Randy? Just uh, want to throw out anything relative to town meeting coming up. Uh, I know Carolyn had sent me an email today or a text regarding the potential different times to do it. So I just make everybody aware that it appears that most towns uh, that are having fall town meetings are doing them outdoors from what I can tell based on information I'm getting from Mass Moderators Association. So just want to let you guys know that. and. and uh, so we can make a decision that makes sense. And then I'm sure the Board of Health will help us do that when the time comes. I would like to also make sure, Randy, that the uh, our fire department and uh, everyone else, DPW, uh, has enough time to get things together because I know that they're actually planning on inside um, unless we determine otherwise. So let's get that decision made as soon as possible. Yes, I agree with that 100%. I believe we're having a meeting on the 20th to discuss that town meeting and hopefully we can make a decision then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go with the flow. Whatever you guys decide, we'll go with it. Well, it's you guys that decide. <laughs> well, the 20th is on Monday. Yes. Are you? Yeah, so I didn't yeah, know we had a meeting a, on Monday. Who's doing the meeting? Unified command meeting. Okay. Well, then you guys will decide. Talk about, we'll, we'll talk about it then and then push it back to the select board, I guess. Okay. Well, okay. There, is not a, there is not a meeting that week. And we're looking at what for October? What's the date? Do you, uh, so I was going to bring all of the details up uh, in discussions and, and what's going to be coming up at the next meeting with Unified. Do you want me to talk about it now? Or would you like me? I was going to do it at uh, a town administrator report. Yeah, let me just do a, a, Randy, do you have any other public comments? I'm not. No, sir, that's it. All right, thanks. Uh, anybody else for public comments before we move on to more town meeting stuff? No? Okay, all right. Carolyn, uh, you wanna do your administrator's uh, report and then we can start more town meeting? Yep, so I'm gonna talk about ribbon cutting first. I did um, send out the disappointment that that date that we've been working on with the governor and lieutenant governor is not gonna work out. So the Lieutenant Governor is available um, on the September 30th at 10 o'clock. So we are moving forward with that. We've adjusted the invitations and all those that were going to be speaking are going to be speaking. Um, uploaded, there should be um, a program schedule so you can see um, who will be speaking. It's a very tight schedule, uh, but um, it, it's, uh, I think it's gonna work out fine. We're still working out some of the logistics, but it will begin 
at the library in senior center. Um, the library's front lawn is gonna be having some work done on it. So we'll, we'll move a little bit more towards the senior center, but um, we'll be working on that. And uh, so you can just see what that program schedule is like. Uh, the other thing, um, the town meeting, I'll go into a little bit of details about that. I have, um, uh, I'll share more of that information at Unified Command uh, about the feedback I had gotten from our town council. Um, a little bit different um, as far as how many are doing it inside and outside, but we'll share that. We'll discuss that at Unified Command. Um, so what, we, we're, what we're looking at is um, because of the schedule and all of the meetings and the public forum that has to take place, closing the warrant, signing the warrant, um, we can still work out our present schedule if um, whatever we come to decide, whether it's October 21st, first at seven o'clock um, inside the high school, um, or the other two options that I'm looking at are uh, Saturday the 16th, which is the Saturday before, or Saturday the 23rd, which would be outside and still discussions about versus outside on the field at the high school or at the public safety. I know there were concerns about the public safety. Uh, it, it was There was wind there and there was a sound issue. I think the sound issue could definitely be resolved, um, but we would it's always that risk where it's gonna be windy at that public safety or at, at uh, the high school, but we'll be talking about that because as Joyce said, it does impact DPW and uh, public safety personnel as well. So we're looking at all those options, but we will um, have recommendations um, from Dr. Mosler and Randy and everyone, uh, Mike Spanknable, as well as uh, the chair is at the Unified Command. So we'll make, bring those recommendations to the next meeting. Um, because of the, those schedules, I, I do need to add September 29th, and my understanding is that you guys are used to having an extra meeting before these town meetings, so I need to add a select board meeting on September 29th, and um, the public forum will be on October 13th, so it is different versus the first and the third. Um, we can skip the, I think it was the sixth, uh, that, which is typically your first meeting of the month, but I, I don't want to have you guys be meeting meeted out if that's a, if that's the right word so just to note that but i will send you a reminder of that as well um i did as i i uh, sent you all an email i forwarded you an email from our town council regarding north hadley village hall um it just came in so i wasn't able to um, have a meeting because we had to post an executive session 48 hours in advance but I know that you are all looking for an update. So they ha it has been busy behind the scenes. So if you could just read that email and I will post an executive session for our next meeting to discuss. Is that executive session gonna be both for that and uh, the other one for discussion? I can talk with you after John, I'm not sure what the other one is. So we can talk about it. There's probably gonna be a couple things we'll be talking about in executive session at the next meeting. Okay. And, and Carolyn, when we when it comes around to budget time, um, we know we have extra meetings to do. So <laughs> don't ever feel bad saying, hey, we need to have a meeting next week because, you know, that's what we're here for. So if you need a meeting, we're here. So okay. just Thank let you. us know. Okay. Thank you. With Zoom, it's much easier anyways. So. It is. It is. Yeah. No, you work every day. We can work once a week. There's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> This, that's it. I, that's all I have. Right? We got we got that on record. What John just said. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> Carolyn. Any anything on your end of it though, um, from your report about people were asking um, just to reiterate what the timeline will be for the Route Nine disaster happening. Why I I I would like to ask DOT what in God's name what were they thinking doing the bridge at the start of the opening of schools? I I, I don't so, think they have yeah. a brain. I don't think they have a brain in their head over there. I'll tell you. Yeah, UMass did not receive anything, and, and I don't think the communities did as well. No. So, I mean, I, I, I don't come that way. I don't know how it's been for you guys going over the bridge or coming back over the bridge in the morning or at rush hours. I, I don't know how it's been. I, I go back roads. Well, but in the always, evening, in the evening is horrific. Yeah, is it? I don't, I don't go that way. Every day. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, going, oh, going. West, it backs up almost to uh, West Street. Yeah, and they, have, they haven't even worked on it now for the last three days, I can tell you that right now. So Joyce, they 
What I was told is that DOT told people it was emergency work that had to be done right now and could not wait because it was emergencies. But uh, apparently they've known about this emergency for at least six months and haven't acted on it until the weekend before the students came back. Absolutely. So that tells anything about their timeline and their planning. Yes, yes, fabulous DOT, yes. So our Route 9 project, that is scheduled to begin date. So I have not heard anything different, but they gave um, the advertising date supposedly was September 11th. Um, so I have not, I've not seen anything or whether I would be seeing it or not. And it, it was still, uh, still the plans were late winter, early spring before construction would begin. So they have to advertise for contractors and all of that. So, so that'll be 20, 22. Yeah, but you know what? I will reach out um, and see if I can get, if there's any changes for the next select board meeting. Between that, Carolyn, and Bay Road Project, just where are we going? We just need to be sure we're all on the same page and not have them slip us something. So on that topic, um, I did have a couple questions of whether things had been delayed or held up because of conservation. And my understanding is that was all approved on time on schedule. Janice helped with that before she left. Yes. And uh, so that process went pretty seamlessly. Um, so it looks like any delays or slowdowns right now will be because of their advertising and, and bid process. Um, but I haven't heard anything. But, and a thank you to Janice for doing that. We appreciate it. Anything else, Karen? Nope, that's it. All right, then let's, we have a hearing at, or uh, yeah, a hearing at 6.30, so we gotta wait for that. Um, let's jump down to 6.1 is, is it Melanson? Is that how you say it? Accounting? Melanson, Melanson. yep. Uh, and Carolyn and Linda, take it away. Yep, I will, um, I, I'll start and I can give you, because I have only worked a year today, um, I haven't had as much history, but Linda certainly will support why this is a good decision. Melanson is who we contract out for accounting services. And we also uh, contracted out up until recently with um, uh, uh, someone who did accounting services for Hadley. And Linda, again, has the history. She'll go into the details of, of the benefit of this. And it has worked out wonderful having Mary and Lori from Melanson working together. And Mary recently was hired by Melanson. So that contract that we had directly with um, Mary, well, we, we won't have that any longer, um, but there will be that added cost plus an additional cost will be added to the Melanson contract because she's joining them. Still working together. Uh, Lori is going to start being here every month. So we have had a very good relationship with Melanson. And I always say this from my past history, uh, working with in-house accountants, that the responses that we get from Melanson are, are very quick and outstanding and work really well together. So Linda, if you can just give a little history of the past, Mary, and that really good coordination. Sure, relationship. This, is, um, this is Mary Erickson, who uh, was originally with us through when we had Justin Cole's firm, Bay, uh, Bay State um, Municipal Accounting. And so Mary has been the one constant in this whole changeover that we've had since we had Bay State. And then um, they left and we had a gap for a couple of months and Mary hopped over and helped us out with that. We then went with Ken Scherf's firm for several months. Um, and uh, we, um, this was, uh, we kept Mary doing our, uh, doing the, uh, warrants each week and processing accounts payable and uh, tried to get with Kincher of them just doing the higher level of uh, accounting, but um, they really wanted the whole thing. It was part of what the pro trouble we had with them. Anyways, we, we lost them. We also were, were working with them through uh, PVPC. So we were paying Kincher and we were paying PVPC. And I think between the two of them, we were pretty close to $90,000, if not more with PVPC, I can't remember. But uh, then, uh, you know, we've had Melanson for a long time, Melanson Heath, as our auditors. And when they decided to go into the accounting business a couple of years ago, they weren't quite ready when we were looking for a new accountant, but they did, uh, they had about a year or two under their belts uh, when we picked them up um, last year. 
And uh, they were very willing to work with Mary. They liked, they liked that uh, concept and uh, we wanted to keep Mary. And then we all entered COVID. And um, we knew that our arrangement with Mary Erickson was only going to last as long as she didn't have another job. And so we benefited under COVID because she wanted to, she was hunkering down and staying home and, uh, and not, not leaving and staying quite quietly with her family. Um, but we knew it was, it was finite. Um, and um, she did indeed get another job, but the benefit is we don't actually have to lose her because she's working for Melanson. And so we we went all around, except for the fact that the price goes up a bit. So I'll tell you, I'll explain that. Their, uh, Melanson's increase, and then they went from 60,000 to, uh, they increased it by 28,000 or for this year, 24 is prorated. Uh, we had budgeted for 15 for Mary. So the actual increase in us for, for us in this current fiscal year is, is 12,000 and the increase next year will be 13,000. And we're still, the total is still not what we were paying for Ken Scherf and PVPC two years ago. So, um, you know, we, it, it, we had, we had a great arrangement and it was, a, um, and it worked out for us financially very well for a couple of years, though we knew it was going to end and it's 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 um, transitioned fairly well. So I do recommend that we stay with them and we sign this and we get right on board. If anyone wants to if we are at a point where we want to go out to bid and I know some of you keep uh, do mention from time to time uh, about looking for uh, someone to hire. I suggest that for a later point. Um, it's something to, to discuss, but we have uh, we've been very happy, and as as, um, as Carolyn said, their responsiveness is amazing. Um, that um, it's it's we hear back, and department heads hear back from them just about as quickly as if you were calling someone over in town hall or trying to walk down the hall and and get them. So um, here we are, and they sent a change order, which is what we're asking. That it, Carolyn, you want we want to we're asking them to sign that. Mm -hmm. or to approve it tonight and come in for signatures and um, take care of it as of September 1, going to the new rate. And um, does, the, does the 28,000 increase cover, is that Mary's increase built in there as well? Or is that just uh, Melanson's increase? Uh, we're just hiring Mar Melanson. It would be the same as if I hired somebody else or if Mary went to another firm. The fact that she's there is just uh, is, is really not um, not related to the contract, although she is going to continue to be dedicated to Hadley. Um, she's also taking on a few other towns, so um, she's she's going to be busy. But, so this is it's just the Melanson increase. And, and then we don't have then we aren't paying Mary anymore. So that's why we had 15 for her. So we have a net increase of 12,000 between the two and, and Mary's off the off the contract. Okay, I was just wondering if Mary was a separate charge on top of that, but it's all in one, so, okay, perfect. Right. Motion to accept Melanson's contract for this, is it one year contract, Linda? It is, uh, okay. it's, for, it's actually for the rest of this fiscal year. Oh, for the rest of this fiscal year, yes. And then we'll, uh, I'm going to check their basic contract. I think it was just for the year two. Um, hmm. I can get a second on that. And then Jane had something. I think. I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> question, by I have a question by Amy and go ahead, Jane. Question, a question. Can they be our accountant and our auditor or do we have to find a different? We do, we do have a different auditor now. As of, uh, as soon as Melanson started, we switched over to Powers and Sullivan. Okay, so, and, and they were the ones, uh, Jane, it, it, uh, he was here, Todd Jerzyk uh, was here about a month ago. I don't know if you were at that meeting. So he presented the audit for FY20. So we are getting an earlier start this year. We are continuing with them that because I think we had a two or three year contract with them. Um, they presented the 20 audit about a month ago and we're getting going on the 21 uh, audit. It starts first week in October. So hopefully... Um, it won't be as late as the huckus next year when when you get this year's audit. So it should Things go better the second year. Things were different. <laughs> In many ways. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? He's disappeared. Gone. Uh, hold on one sec. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. There, sorry. Wiskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, we got a few. Thank you, Linda, for that. Uh, all right. And then anything else while you're here with us? No? All right. Is Joyce back on? Yes. I think so. She's been oh, on she her picture's gone, is what it is. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, uh, we've got just a few minutes. So why don't we jump down to 7.1 bylaw committee? And Carolyn, do you want to give a quick little summary of what this is and the two-week announcement? Sure, just a reminder that I had asked or recommended that um, the town that bylaws be reviewed and that it is a long process. Typically it's one, a one to two year uh, project. So um, what I, I had just uh, recommended it last, at the last select board meeting, uh, but I told you I would come with some suggestions of either departments um, and they would, they would uh, ask somebody from their department or board to take part in that committee. Um, as well as I do think it would, my suggestion would be that the, that the select board advertise for at least two uh, residents in the community to be involved with it as well. So my recommendation would be to have somebody from planning, uh, building inspections, uh, the clerk's office, Jessica, uh, both the police and fire department, um, board of health, conservation, ZBA, and um, th those would be my recommendations that are typically involved with bylaw committees, but you may have another department that you'd like to add to it. Um, but I would recommend maybe for a couple of weeks advertise for anybody interested in participating in the bylaw committee. Yeah, we've been trying to do 14 day, you know, two weeks basically for an announcement to get, mm -hmm. allow people to have time to go get letters to Jennifer. Um, so when is our next meeting? Is it two weeks from now? One. Oh, one. Okay. One. Oh, we just added one. I forgot. So, all right. Um, so it gives us three weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So let's put that out there. And if you're interested, uh, we'll, we'll probably do two, two members of the community. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Okay. All right. So anybody that's watching, if you'd like to be on the bylaw committee, send a letter to or an email to Jennifer. And the point is to kind of streamline this, um, get rid of bylaws that are, you know, talking about horses on tied up on the common from the, you know, 1800s and also update things. So that way they have uh, modern language and references and that we can put more of these bylaws online. We have some of our bylaws online in the electronic uh, system, but there's a lot of stuff that could use updating. Uh, anything else on that, Kron? Nope, that's it. Okay. Uh, we got uh, words are available for help. Uh, TV five, cable five. I'm I didn't, sorry. Didn't hear that, John. I didn't hear you, John. Uh, uh, more input from the public. We've got other boards that are still have vacant positions. I'm gonna bake. John, I'm going to put together my recruiting list for town meeting, and it'll have the little sheets I pass out with all the openings, um, asking people to, to volunteer for their town. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll put that back together. Are we, also, we also um, related to conservation, since Edwin Matusko has resigned from his at-large committee position on CPA, and is now the delegate from conservation. We have an open position there. Will that be on your list? Well, it hasn't been presented to the select board yet for y'all to vote on it because it wasn't received until today. Okay. So um, I was I had it to go onto your next agenda and for y'all to Fine. advertise it then, which is the correct thing to do. Fine. Okay. Just didn't want to lose it. I trust me, I'm all over it. We, we can't lose positions. They're there. Yeah. And we'll put that one out for two weeks as well. Give people a chance to uh, get their letters of interest in. So, um, all right. I show 630 and it looks like uh, Scott from Happier Valley Comedy is here. Hello. Hi, Scott. How are you? Good. How's it going? Good. Um, 
All right, so this is, Jennifer, why don't you introduce what we're doing? Absolutely, so this is Scott Bregman from Happier Valley Comedy, and they are looking to take a general on-premise all alcohol license. Um, their former next door neighbors are no longer in business and they were in the tap room. And, and so they're in the Mill Valley suites there. And Happier Valley Comedy would like to take over the tap room premise to have a location to serve their audiences, class participants and stuff um, before their shows and such. So um, they're coming before this, look forward to ask for a license. Uh, before y'all talk to Scott, I'll just say uh, building inspector, fire chief and police chief have all reviewed the license, um, all are okay with it. Um, Tommy and Michael, of course, will have to go out and do inspections, but everybody does approve the application. So Scott, do you maybe wanna talk a little bit about what you would like to do? Sure, yeah. Um, circumstances worked out beneficially where we made it through the pand pandemic in good shape and we have always had a community that's slightly larger than our current space and so the space next to us was vacant and uh, the landlord likes us and trusts us and wanted to make it easy for us to get in there so we have um, signed a lease and we're using it currently as a third space for rehearsals and classes and once we have shows going again which will be when it feels a little safer for everybody to gather um, we'll be using it as a, our box office and a little lobby and bar area before and after shows on Saturday nights. And eventually we may open it on other nights as well, but current plans is really just Saturday night service and other nights would just be used as a rehearsal space. Did they leave the bar and everything in there or did they? Yeah, so that's all in place already. Yep, everything's in there and that's that's written into our lease, the use of all the equipment in there. And there's so much equipment is actually, we're not gonna use some of it but everything we need is there well oh, that's good yeah and there's going to be a doorway between the two suites over there connecting or no they have to go outside mm -hmm. yeah no the way that everything's built right now there's no no good way to directly connect the spaces so the liquor license is just for that sweet c formerly tap room space okay and yeah, so it's a wine and beer or all alcohol it's you want to speak to Jennifer? Yeah, it's all alcohol because this is one of your special legislation licenses mm -hmm. that is tied to the location. So it's an all alcohol license. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept this. I wish him well in his business and hope things go well and things start to open up a little bit more. We can all keep our fingers crossed on that because we don't know how it's going. But you got my vote on that to uh, make a motion for it. A second. Right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on this license approval? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Okay, thank you. Scott, is there anything else? You also have your common vehicular license? Um, they're going to take a common vehicular license out to go with their liquor license request. So could I ask y'all to approve the common vehicular as well? So moved. Thank you. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer, you had something? Or? Nope. I want a roll call. <laughs> okay. All right, go roll ahead. call. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Tungalo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, congrats, Scott, and uh, good luck with the expansion. Thank you. I think the only other thing was to um, request that the liquor license fee be um, prorated for the end of the year, since we're in um, September. That's, that's fine with me. I think we've done it in the past for other people, so I would uh, make a motion to prorate the liquor license till the end of the year, and then um, go to the full price uh, beginning in January. That's a motion. Second. Right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. And anything on that? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Changaloo? Yes. Laskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. I will let you know that the ABCC is running a little slow. They're, they're moving faster than they were. 
so it will be pretty late in the year probably before they get their license so um but we're gonna we're gonna move as fast as we can for them thank you all all right thanks scott have a good night good luck to you thank you all right uh before we go to special town meeting, before I forget, um, Diana from the Hatfield Select Board has asked me if any of the select board members would be able to attend their ceremonial river crossing reenactment on Saturday at 1045. Um, Is this Saturday? Yep. So if, if you're interested um, and you'd like to do that, get in touch with me tomorrow probably or, or call Diana over the, in, in Hatfield for details. Um, it's gonna go from uh, the trail at the end of Huntington Road across, across the river in a, I think a homemade boat. So it should be interesting. Are they asking us to go in the boat or just to be there on the shore cheering? So you missed the boat on volunteering to go in the boat. They, uh, that, I, <laughs> I think uh, Linda Hannum, I believe is in the boat rowing. Uh, they wanted they wanted people with rowing experience to, to help them row. Um, we will have our fire department, I believe, on their boat just in case anything happens in the crossing downriver. But um, I think they have volunteers from Hatfield and some from Hadley to actually row the boat across the river. I wish I had Glory DeFavio get in that boat from our former select woman <laughs> and her partner. <laughs> so. But it so, sounds great. I, I'm not in town. So I would have loved to have been there. But but if you can go 1045 or so, and if you have any questions, contact Diana or, or myself. So that's, uh, and that's Diana Zainel. So you have yeah. to say yes. Yep. Um, okay. So I think the last thing we have is 7.2 town meeting, especially town meeting warrant. Um, Carolyn, do you want to? Sure. Linda, Linda and I will both go over it, but I'll start with a few of the things. A lot of it you have already seen, but we continue to uh, work diligently to um, clean it up and take out what, what may need to be taken out and just be a little bit more specific, as well as um, capitals, Capital Committee has met, Finance Committee is meeting, as well as um, Community Preservation. So we're getting closer to, to some more accurate numbers. Um, you'll see, um, I don't know, Linda, do you want to put that up or would that be easier? I, I could share. If, what do you think, David, you want that up on the screen? Yeah, I think it'd be helpful and especially for people watching at home. Okay. All right. Cause we have a lot more, uh, numbers and items now. So let's see. And in color, which is so helpful. Okay. So the first article is the uh, omnibus budget, the general fund, and it's to amend the fiscal year 2022. Some of those things we have gone over. I'm gonna go over some of the uh, more organizational changes that will have a financial impact, such as the select board salaries. If you remember real, real briefly, uh, we, are, we recognized a need for some support for some of the boards and committees and some of the staff here for some clerical assistance. And um, so that is included right there. We're still working on those numbers because we're waiting for Deborah to get back from the time that she had already had um, planned to take off our HR person. She's gonna help us hone in, get some job descriptions a little bit more specific based on what the needs are and uh, spend some more time on that. So those numbers will continue to get closer to what they're going to be. Uh, the town accountant, Linda explained to you what that change is going to be. Conservation Commission, uh, we are still in the middle. We do um, have some discussions with a neighboring town to possibly share a position. So we are still working on that, what that number may look like and what that position may look like. Um, police, I'm gonna let Linda talk about the, uh, the cruiser versus the purchasing. Um, I am gonna just talk about the building. I did talk about this before, building inspection salaries. That's really just a cleanup from how it's getting funded. It's not an increase, it's just how it's getting funded and how we're gonna work out that other, uh, the select board salary changes. Uh, and then high race, highway salaries, I explained uh, at the last meeting that we had cut down to one and a half staffing positions for administrative support at DPW. 
definitely finding that it's, that it's not enough. It really needs two full-time position, positions. So that, that, that's what that uh, reflects. And um, so Linda, I'm gonna ask you to do the, the police cruiser and then uh, the highway expenses, the debt and the OPEB. Right, we have three items on here uh, that relate to uh, capital planning, really, and helping with our capital planning. The first one is the cruiser. Uh, the police, have, uh, Chief Mason, have put a $65,000 cruiser in the capital plan as he uh, generally does from year to year um, because uh, the, the capital planning committee is seems, uh, I don't want to speak for them, except oh, you, you, you'll correct me, David, but um, the general consensus is that we're going to try and keep the, they are going to try and keep the items on the fall town meeting limited within um, what can be borrowed within the levy and uh, that understand and not putting any debt exclusion overrides forward, which means they're trying to get as much off of that as they can. Uh, very appropriately moved off is, a, is if, if they lease instead of uh, purchase a, um, a cruiser, and there are many other benefits for it, and I don't want to get into the detail of that tonight until the Capital Planning Committee is voted until and the uh, police chief can speak to himself for himself. But um, increasing that budget uh, in order to accommodate a lease seems like a really good way to go from here forward. Uh, the other capital item, ditch funding, we're not going to ditch their funding. This is about funding for the ditches. Um, there had been a $100,000 item um, funded before in, in capital. Um, and then they said from there on, they can maintain very similar to the cruiser. Then this is an item that probably should be in the highway budget anyways. And if we increase their increase their budget by about twenty thousand dollars and continue that from year to year, similar to them taking care of trees and paving and very uh, various other ongoing maintenance items, it can be accommodated within the budget, and then they won't be competing for um, capital uh, capital funding dollars um, on the other side. Um, and uh, the, the next one for the debt consistent with this, it has been raised and I know the chair is interested in this and they are, and so we're just going to put it in there as a placeholder. Um, it's up to them and the finance committee to, to, uh, to uh, make the re recommendation and you and the select board. But I put it in there because I think you're closing the warrant tonight that uh, the possibility that if another 50 or $100,000 was added to debt, we would be able to um, do more in borrowing within the levy in order to cover more of these capital costs that are coming before the board. So uh, that wraps up the capital part. Um, you, you'll always see me putting OPEB funding back in there. That's uh, that's up to discussion. I don't. You're not going to make any votes tonight. But that would be if you um, if you put the full uh, the funding for OPEB back in. That would be two hundred and seventy seven thousand. Um, the total increase to the budget then would be four hundred and forty three. Um, thousand to cover all of these. And I think everything that isn't, uh, everything but the last two, they come in at less than a hundred thousand. This was not, Carolyn did not open this up as, uh, does anyone have changes in their budget? There's, there's an ongoing theme here of taking care of the staff support needs and then the, the capital changes and, and OPEP. Linda so, is 100% mm -hmm. uh, right as far as the debt exclusion, although the capital committee has not voted yet. I think we have right. in two weeks. Uh, the consensus or the general feeling of the committee is that we uh, are probably not going to recommend something that would require a debt exclusion or an override vote. So. Hey, Linda. Mm -hmm. At one time, um, DPW, where it was looking into leasing the uh, dump trucks, I don't know if that's still available or not or an option. That maybe uh, finance and uh, capital can consider. Yeah, we can. Well, um, we have. They have taken a number of things off of their capital list for this year, but it's certainly worth discussing if there are uh, if there are similar items, similar changes that can be made there. Um, yeah, feel free to bring it up or mention it. We have talked about leasing or renting in a couple of cases. Again, when we get there, we'll talk about the roller and, and there are reasons they don't want to do that. But um, but yeah, actually, only two years ago, or the last few times that the police looked at the, the cruisers, it was not feasible to be leasing, and things have changed. So things do change from year to year, and we have to uh, relook at 
you know, look, relook at, uh, see, see what's changed in the business world, see what's changed in the financial situations. And uh, in the case of the police, I think that the fact that they went to these, um, uh, they got out away from the Crown Victorias and went to this new, uh, what are they, the SUVs, that they're lasting better and, uh, and the, the lease arrangements are, um, are better. So, yeah, I, it's always, even if it, it's shot down one year, John, it's always worth bringing it up again and seeing if mm -hmm. things have changed. Move on, Carolyn, or? Sure, yep, Mr. Stuck. This would be uh, fixing the, uh, this is just to fix the funding once we settle on the amount of that increase. Um, article two is the, the enterprise fund portion of the budget. There are no changes to their budget, but there would be needs to be some changes to the funding of it to allow for reserves uh, to come in and be used. Um, these are a higher level of reserves than may be may ultimately be necessary because um, we need to use FY21 revenues to fund FY22 budget uh, for state reporting uh, requirements. And so in order to balance it, it has reserves, but we're hoping that the revenue we're expecting, I'm expecting that the revenue will go up, but I don't know, maybe it won't. We'll, we'll have to keep revisiting that issue. Um, You want me to keep going, Carolyn? <laughs> You're on a roll. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Prior year bills, we don't have any, but if one pops up between now and town meeting, we've got the place to put it. Uh, so hopefully that will come right out. Uh, cash transfers, uh, I think you remember a couple of years ago, we had the right to farm signs. They came in $375 higher. Uh, the money did get spent and we have to sort of fill in that hole. So uh, out, out of free cash, we should have free cash so that we can uh, fully fund that, that uh, the article to what it actually cost. And Carolyn? <laughs> sure. Yeah, so I, I, I have to say, um, we've been working really hard to look at past projects that either are, haven't been pleaded, completed, started, or there's leftover balances. And, and Linda has done a tremendous job um, working with Lori to look at some um, leftover small balances. So these are some things that we're still waiting to get some more feedback from department heads, um, but we, would, we are looking to try to address some of the things that aren't completed or, uh, or still have a leftover balance to see what else work needs to be done for those articles. So we'll, again, we'll have more information on that um, as well as with CPA um, to see what, if, if they need to clean up those articles as well. And then I, I, I wish Amy Fiden was here because she did an amazing job um, ex giving an update after the Capitol meeting um, on all of these capital articles. So these are still in request. These are requested. Um, as Linda mentioned, there are some, um, if you look at in the red, that will probably be dropped or postponed into the annual town meeting. So again, these still need to get approved by capital in the finance committee. Um, but as you can see, um, we are, there's some larger items there that we are going to wait for the annual or, um, look to see some alternative ways to address the issue. And, and we can, if you, if you want to go over any of those, uh, we can answer any questions you have. Right. Yeah. These are technically all still on the table and the red ones are likely, um, likely to drop. Does that, does that seem right to you, David? We picked on the right ones. Yeah. Um, we, we have what 300,000 roughly in order uh, worth of stuff we could spend on capital. Uh, that, that we can spend and we usually vote uh, or we usually uh, the committee approves a higher amount than that because not everything goes through as you see from our cleanup articles. So it's usually in the 350,000 range. And if, if the committees, um, if you all decide that we want to increase that budget, we could then increase in, for, to another 100,000 of items. These are, this is too much here right now, but uh, these are the things that are still on the table. So for people watching at home, that's what the committee is working on is kind of triaging of what's needed now and what can, what can wait. So. Mm -hmm. so 
Article five is only if, um, if, if um, back on that list, uh, the gas pumps at DPW are past re being able to replace or fix. So they need to be, um, we need to get new pumps and we need to, de to decommission the older pumps. So we're still looking at that on, um, you know, other alternatives or waiting until the annual. But if this does get approved and it is the best option to do this, um, this article um, 5.2 is a previous article. Um, there's 30,000 that was borrowed to repair the DPW gas pumps that we would, um, we, we would be using um, how do you explain this, Linda? Taking uh, we would be repurposing. That. Yeah, we would be repurposing the repurposing repair money <laughs> in, in, into either purchase, which is, doesn't seem likely at this point, but decision hasn't been made, or it would be towards, it would go towards, uh, I think they're getting a quote on decommissioning. And I think that we would then gear that 30,000 towards that cost of uh, whether they have to fill them with sand, remove them or whatever it is to uh, empty those uh, gas pumps out and get them offline. They'll probably have to be dug up. There's nothing in the way uh, where they yeah. will fill those. There's enough room to dig them. Right, Yeah. right. Nice. Yeah, I, just, I have no idea what the price is, so that'll be interesting to see what comes in. Linda, you want to do six, Article 6? Um, yeah, stabilization fund. Um, we, we have used that fund uh, to balance the budget the last couple of years. Um, we also did a return, I think, at the last town meeting. Uh -huh. On my list here, but yeah, well, we did a return of funds about 183,000, but we also borrowed it to to fund two years worth of budget. So we are down um, several hundred thousand dollars in that account, and each time, uh, it's it's suggested that we will put that money back. The a fund is down to about 1.3 million now, um, and the goal has always been to maintain at least two million and perhaps get higher than that. So uh, the amount that we would put in there. Uh, we should have a really good idea on what we, our, our free cash is. Um, Lori was going to try and um, try and wrap it up as best she could at the end of this week. And she's coming out for the day on Tuesday and we're going to meet with her then too. So we will put an amount in there um, and for you and the finance committee to consider for uh, putting back into the stabilization fund um, this fall. Um, or, or wait till spring, whatever you might want to do, but we'll have we'll have an idea of what's available to put back into that fund if building it back up again is something that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then Article Seven I've mentioned before is just a, uh, a you know a logistical thing. We need to the, uh, transfer the ownership of the Goodwin Memorial Library from the trustees to uh, the town of Hadley. So uh, town council will be writing that article and that will get more specific after that after he reviews it and gives us the final copy and then the cpa articles these are reserved for cpa we haven't gotten um, they still have to meet to give us some more specifics but we did want to put a placeholder because i am going to ask you to close the warrant tonight so we just wanted to make sure those items were in there we don't have any amounts or anything like that at this point they met earlier this week um, but they're going to meet again at the end of the month. And then we've got a placeholder uh, for a planning board zoning bylaw change. I think that and is the bylaw change. That's it. That's it? <laughs> I know. That's it? I think, wow, I think that's it's not it. pages long. I thought it was really almost a placeholder, <laughs> but you're right. I think it is. All right, and then the mosquito control. I do. I do want to talk to you about that. I, I want to ask that you would, um, even though we closed the warrant today, we you know we can still make changes with the warrant. Um, I, I do. I, I uploaded um, two documents. I think you all got the email in the early summer from Senator Comerford. Um, her disappointment that her application to the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs for the mosquito opt-out for the communities that, that chose to opt out were, uh, there are, many of them were denied. And so she had sent a letter, um, 
asking the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs why and what was the criteria. So there was a response. Um, I also included that um, from the Envi Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. So you have both of those documents. So I'd ask, ask you in the next, um, the next time we meet, if you would read those two documents and then um, it would be helpful. Um, you guys did agree to put this on the town warrant for the special meeting, for the special town meeting in the spring, you agreed to do that for the fall. And so that's why it's on here. But based on that information, I think it would be, a, I would recommend that you guys read it and discuss it at the next meeting and decide whether you want, if it's appropriate to have that article on the warrant or not. Caroline, are we on that list of not op, uh, opting out and not getting uh, accepted? Do you know? You, you chose, if, if I remember correctly, that the select board chose not to uh, submit an application to opt out. No, no, I know, I understand that, but are we in a, a medium or high risk now that we would, uh, we would, we our application wouldn't be accepted anyway? I don't know. I can look into that for the next meeting. All right. You know, I, I mean, we could still, if we have a, at election time, we could still put a non-binding question on the ballot also, you know, but that's still not going to stop the state from not accepting our application if we do apply for it. As far as I know, they haven't sprayed anything this year, even, even though they refuse to allow the communities to opt out. As far as I know, they haven't actually sprayed anything in Western Mass, at least. Eastern Mass, I believe they have. Um, so I, it, it, I was watching the Boston News and they are uh, aerial spraying out East right now. So I'll make, I'll make sure that is an agenda item. I just want to be careful how much we discuss it right now because it wasn't an agenda item. Yeah, so that's, no, that, that's fine. You can put yeah. it out for next time. So that is it. So I just need a vote that for you guys to close the warrant. Motion to, motion to close the warrant. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. And uh, I don't know, this looks like a relatively brief town, town meeting based on what's on here. All about money. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, what it'll be, we really worked hard to make sure it was quick and easy in case we are outside. So that will be very quick. Yeah. The buck stops here. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion on uh, closing the warrant? So moved. Oh, I already said that. You already did that. I'm going again. <laughs> Let's just roll call it. it. <laughs> Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chung Lu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. And uh, I think that's it on the agenda. Do we have anything unanticipated? Okay. I have announcements, but that's next, right? right? We'll go right into that. Announcements, go ahead. Oh my gosh, I have so many shout outs. Um, so as most of you know, the Three County Fair um, was Labor Day weekend. Um, so I have a bunch of shout outs. Um, you know, there's a lot of Hadley residents that participate from volunteers to department heads um, to a bunch of exhibitors. Um, shout out to the Hopkins Academy Key, uh, Key Club who decorated a bus which looked awesome that was in the demolition derby on saturday um shout out to all breed bandits 4-h club which is based out of hadley that has a bunch of hadley kids in it it got second place on saturday and it also won best decorated um there was a bunch of kids that were exhibitors in the agricultural hall the exhibit hall which is like arts and crafts and sewing and all of that um exhibitors that were in the youth sheep show and the youth swine show, which David, David's daughter was a clover bud. Um, so Cora, she was a clover bud um, in the youth swine show and she actually won reserve grand champion showman um, at the youth swine show. So hey, shout out go to, Cora. Yes. <laughs> to a whole <laughs> bunch of Hadley people for um, you know being part of that. And it was a huge success this year. Um, 
2019 was actually a killer year for them. Um, so it looked like it was down like 3%, but in all actuality, it was a phenomenal year and it went off without a hitch. There was no uh, complaints from the health department or anything. So um, we were really excited to be back. So yay. Yay. Congratulations, <laughs> Three County. Nice job. All right. Is that it for you, Amy? Sorry, that was like a lot. That was like a whole bunch on this note. A little <laughs> tiny note. I wrote a whole bunch on here. But yeah, that was my shout outs. I have an announcement. Uh, you may have noticed as you drive around town at all the entrances to Hadley, there are now signs from the Climate Change Committee that were made by Miss Duncan's seventh grade class about recycling and keep our town clean. Nice. Yeah, I saw you have to look for them. Don't don't trash our town and some some similar ones. They look pretty good. Yeah, they're, I, I think one they're, at the they're all different, Hill. but they're the same message. Yes. Yeah, I think there's one at the end of Rocky Hill at the intersection. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. I'll just say thank you to the Legion for a chicken to go this weekend. Um, I believe it was a success for them. Um, certainly got a little warmer than we anticipated, but again, we never know what the weather is going to bring and little wind and whatnot, and they cook those chickens and everything else, and uh, they did a great job. So thank you to the Legion and the people that participated that not are always Legion members that do support them. So um, thank you to all of them. All right. Anything else? All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? No, yes. <laughs> Chungalo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. And can I ask for all five of you to swing by and see me? I have so many wonderful things for you all to sign. Seriously, come see me. Lots of signing. Please, right. I will be there. <laughs> it's all it's all laid out really nicely. Thank if you. you. If you leave it there, can we sign as we come back into town so it'll be on your desk? Yes. Okay. Um, it would be great to have everybody's signatures on a Monday morning so I could get all of these things out like that. Please. Okay. That that can happen. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> All right, so we're adjourned. Good night, everybody. And and we'll see everybody on the 29th. 29th. And the 30th. Well, yeah, I was going to add that I, for us yeah. as a select board meeting, but again, Jane, too, also that we have all of these dedications of our brand new buildings that we haven't been able to properly acknowledge, um, even though they have been up and functioning and things have been taking place but I think it's only proper for all of us to thank everybody that um, put so much time and effort uh, into these buildings let's recognize them at, at this time so uh, please show up and be there on the 30th and be at our dedications and uh, let's do it the right way let's do it the Hadley way where we always appreciate um, how things turn out so thank you